Hey, greetings and salutations, and welcome to another edition of Rise, the multimedia magazine. And in our studios, I have the formidable and illustrious <laughs> Ms. Denise Stokes. How are you, Denise? I'm wonderful. Good. Good to, be here. Good to have you. Good to have you. You know, we're close friends living here in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Both advocates, but you have been doing uh, HIV advocacy for quite some time now. Yes. Maybe tell me a little bit how you got involved in the work and what it's been like since you've been doing it. Um, I got involved um, because somebody reached out to, tr- to try to help me, to educate me. I had been diagnosed with um, HIV at 16. i would had it since I was 13, and I really didn't know a lot about it. Mm-hmm. And back in the day when I got diagnosed, it was difficult to get information because nobody wanted to talk to somebody else's kid about right. AIDS. You know, because right. there was only one word for it back then, and that was AIDS. Right. So, you remember that? I do. And no, I do. only one word and no medication. No medication, no mm-hmm. hope, mm-hmm. no rights protected, very few advocates. It was basically a very blank and, you know, treacherous landscape. Wow, and you were very young at the time as well. How did you survive that emotionally? Um, God's grace and hope. Hope is, is a wonderful medicine um, because it... What it did for me in those days, especially when there didn't seem to be a reason to hope, is it it just gave me the ability not to give up, and that's all I really needed. Um, I have lots of friends, and I'm sure you've had the same experience, lots of friends who have died over a period of years. And, you know, it's a fortunate thing to be one of the ones that um, I'm here, I'm alive, I'm vibrant. Wave after wave of new medication came along, change after change occurred. So I've been riding this wave for a very long time, but I'm always cognizant, you know, of those who have gone before me, my predecessors in this arena. Well, you know, you mentioned a couple of things that brought up some questions. And one is uh, what it takes to become a long-term survivor. Uh, some of the experiences is that I know that there's a metamorphosis, an evolution, mm-hmm. as it were, of mm-hmm. your emotions mm-hmm. and how we have to actually create a positive mindset. We do. Mm-hmm. We do. We, we as, as HIV positive people, we absolutely have to become allergic to hopelessness and self-pity <laughs> uh, in action. <laughs> I like Fear. that. Yes. We have to become allergic to these things because it's what keeps us from getting the new. The more information you have, the more you're able to make a choice that's good for you. Um, My doctor is my life partner. (laughs) Right. And we make decisions together, but I have to be informed. I can't just go to my doctor's office and, you know, okay, great. (laughs) Right. Well, you know, and that is the problem with stigma because it keeps people cut off from information, uh, from going both ways. In the early days, there was a dearth of information Mm -hmm. that was being disseminated. Mm -hmm. But even still, Mm -hmm. in order to raise our emotion and our vibration, as it were, I heard you mention earlier on when we were in the green room, the brown room, as it were, Mm -hmm. that you are an Aries 4. Yes, I am. (laughs) So you have some understanding of vibration. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm... Playing defense is one thing, but playing offense is another. Mm -hmm. And we are very much aware of your gift as a spoken word artist. How much has your talents and your energy for doing positive things, uh, as far as your personality is concerned, how much has that played a part in your wellness? Oh, love is love is absolutely healing. (laughs) Love is the absolute medicine for everything. Thank you. And when I can allow energy to flow through me and not block people and you know even those who try to stigmatize me when I don't shut people out when I don't shut out ideas when I don't shut out the ability to let people know me and not be afraid of what they think then I empower myself in so many ways um when we closet ourselves emotionally it it breeds disease it breeds apathy you know thank you yes Mm. and that doesn't go well with well things must be going pretty well for you now because you look fabulous thank you Mm -hmm. (laughs) i know that you are a spoken word artist yes Uh, that's one of your avocations as well Mm -hmm. uh tell us about this motorcycle thing what is this what is this i'm a harley girl are you (laughs) I'm definitely a Harley girl. Okay. I, I don't take to pink very well, so I'd like to say Harley, please. <laughs> Just because it's women gear, you don't have to put the pink thread through. I'm okay. Not a pink kind of girl. <laughs> but I love, um, I've always loved motorcycles, and I don't think that, you know, I have a lot of respect for people who ride other things. Other people make wonderful motorcycles, but I love what I love, and I don't think it's a bike unless it's a Harley. Uh, whatever <laughs> so, you are loving is obviously loving you as well. 
I know your story has got to be a fabulous one when told. Even in doing the research, I noticed how prolific you have been for quite some time. Uh, you have a new book coming up. I do. Tell I us do. about that. I'm uh, From the Crack House to the White House has been... You oh, know, hold on. <laughs> from what to what? <laughs> from the Crack House to the White House. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's been a part of my journey. I've, I've had to... Um, and part of my learning process and a part of my exposure has been to live in the darkest of places. And, and I remember I used to think that I was there shut off from light, but I didn't realize light was in me. Mm. So it didn't matter how dark the place I was in, that, that, that light of hope was always there. And it was just a matter of time, you know, before I reconnected to, you know, people that were doing different things that could give me tools for living and, and teach me how to love myself so that I could you know, love others and, and help teach them how to love themselves. It was just a matter of time. Just wow. Like, hold on. <laughs> That's quite a journey, though, from the crack house to the White House. And I know that the part of your journey, which has gotten you there, should I say, has been your HIV story. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. This is, um, this is in a couple of months, it'll be my 30th year of living with HIV. Wow. Okay. And living with, not dying with, not waiting to die, not wishing I were dead, just... I'm unstoppable. I'm unbreakable. I just believe that. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I yes, just you believe are. that. So, um, and I've gone through a lot of changes. You know, I've seen you know high viral load in excess of 750,000. I have you know 17 fabulous T cells doing their thing. 17. 17 is a wonderful number. We'll talk about that. <laughs> but you know, I have um, had Stephen Johnson syndrome from allergies and PCP. You know. And we can read about all of that in the book. Can we read about, and maybe we can, can we take a break and come back and talk a little bit about your, uh, your life and, and what has happened to you as far as the drug part of it is Absolutely. concerned and, and the recovery part? Because I think that's something that's important as well. We know that there's an issue with heterosexuals and HIV and not being represented. Right. And now that we're seeing the numbers of black women who are, are uh, becoming infected, Mm -hmm. uh, we, and we're still not really focused on, and I don't think that there's a comfortable environment for heterosexual black men. No, we need to talk about that. We really need mm, to talk as about a family, that. As a family. As a family. As a family. As a family. So we're going to get down and do some family talk, but okay. we're going to talk about the drugs as well, okay? Okay, let's do that. So let's come back, and I want you to know that we're in the studio here at 816B, as we always are. And this is Rise the Multi Magazine. I'm with my good friend, Denise Stokes.